what I'd like to do today is take some time to review our next lab and talk about it and do that, answer questions that you have um, about how it should work. And just maybe discuss an approach that you could possibly take. Um, you know, I mean, a lot of people take different approaches to code. Um, the approach I take and the approach I describe would be the pro approach I would actually take if I was doing this. So it's not like I'm just lecturing something just because I read it in a textbook or something like that. This is, this is how I write stuff. And uh, again, if you take a different approach, well, you know, if you're successful with it, fine. But you might want to consider trying it this way at least and see if it works for you. So your next homework assignment, which is due the 28th, I gave you eight days to work on this one, is to take two classes that I created for you and use them within an Android application. So downline the pizza classes in the week five module. We'll look at those in a minute. Create a UI that will allow the user to choose the size of the pizza, whether it has pepperoni not, and a button to add the pizza to the order. The UI should show a scrollable list of all pizzas ordered. When a pizza is added to the order, show the total amount of the order and the total baking time. For an extra challenge, um, add the ability to delete a pizza. All right. So that's what you have to do. We'll look at the classes in more detail in a minute, but I'm curious because in reading that, I think I may have omitted something, but we'll, we'll check based on the pizza classes that I have. I'm mistaken. All right. The size of the pizza is defined to be um, a single character S, M, or L. There's a message to get the cost of the pizza, or there's a method to get the cost of the pizza and a method to get the um, baking time for the pizza. There's then an order class, which would consist of multiple pizzas. And the assumption is that the cost of the order is the sum of the cost of all the pizzas. And the baking time is the maximum baking time for any pizza on the order. The thought being that you can bake all the pizzas at once. I don't know, that might not be a good assumption in a pizza place. Maybe their pizza only fits so many oven, uh, maybe their oven only fits so many pizzas, but we'll assume they have a gigantic oven. Okay, so those are the key methods. You have pizzas, you have orders. Pizzas have a size and a, um, whether a boolean that indicates whether that's pepperoni or not. Um, also has a method for calculating the cost of the pizza has a method for uh, the bake time of the pizza. An order contains a collection of pizzas, an array list. There's a method to add an order, uh, add a pizza to an order. There's a method to calculate the total cost of the whole order and the baking time of the order. I have code here that tests this. So I wrote a test Java routine 
that will go and will allow me to create a pizza, set its parameters, create another pizza, set its parameters, add them both to the order, and then output the baking time. And we could easily output the um, total cost as well. So that's it in a nutshell. Let's talk about this in terms of pieces because it's, it's typically good to break a big project or big assignment or a task into smaller subtasks. All right. Um, it's good for so many reasons. It's easier to debug typically. It's better for your morale. All right. Rather than having a gigantic mess of code, nothing of which works. It's better to have a small mess of code that you have a fighting chance of being able to figure out what's wrong and fix. And it's just in general a good way to do it. So here's how I would break this down if I was thinking about it. And as you're breaking it down, it's good to sort of take a mental inventory of the, of the assignment and to think, like, what parts of this am I pretty sure about? What parts of this am I a little unsure about? What parts of this am I totally clueless? Because a lot of times students will tell me they have no idea how to proceed on something. All right? And I believe that they feel that way. I don't think they're making it up or trying to, you know, excuse, you know, get out of doing it or whatever. But I think a lot of times they underestimate what they know. Because even in a very difficult problem, you probably know something about how to proceed with it. And therefore, let's start with that and we can build upon it, and we can identify just what the, the difficulty is, and we can get past it. Again, doing it incrementally rather than writing a whole set of code that does everything all at once. So first thing I'm going to say is, I'm going to start with the user interface. All right? Because that seems like a good piece to, to, to start with. Remember, our pizza has a size associated with it. which is either small, medium, or large. And our pizza may or may not have pepperoni, which is a yes or no question. What would you see as a user interface looking like for this? Just the entry of a pizza, let's put it that way. Just to enter the pizza, what do you think our entry screen should look like? Yeah, drop down, which is I'll, called what? I'll, I'll, it, I was thinking of using a radio button. Uh, radio buttons would work just as well. What do you call a drop down in the Android world? A uh, spinner control. So if you have a drop down for the size, it contains three values small, medium, and large. All right? What are you going to have for the pepperoni? Checkbox. You could also have another drop down that said yes or no. You could also have radio buttons that said yes or no. So there's some variation in how you do this. Bottom line is you wouldn't have two text boxes, right? All right? No, because you want to constrain the user to pick only certain things. What else would we have? Well, what does, what does, uh, what, what we want to add this pizza to the order, so we're going to have a button. All right. We are then going to have a box for total bake time. And total cost of the order. Will be like this. Then we're going to have a scrollable list of the pizzas. So maybe large plain, large pepperoni, 
pizzas they order. All right, let's approach this GUI a piece at a time. All right, and I'm going to ask two parts of the question. All right, I'm going to ask first of all how comfortable. Well, no, no, no. I'm going to first ask, have we gone over this before? Have we gone over this or something like this before? Then I'm going to ask, how comfortable are you with that? Because those are two different things, right? We may have covered it, but you might not be very comfortable with it. Or we may have covered it and you say, yeah, I'm pretty comfortable with that. So let's look at this part of the user interface. We're not talking about functionality yet. We're talking about simply the user interface. How comfortable are you designing this kind of user interface? Or, or have we gone over designing this kind of user interface? Yes, we have. All right. How comfortable are you doing that? We had to rate on a scale of 1 to 10. 6? OK, the hard part is the bottom. I'd say about an 8. Okay. All right. So, five being the middle, let's say, we all kind of agree that this part of it, more than average, let's say, you know how to do. The, there's a couple other things, though. All right. There is hooking the classes to the button so that when we click the add button, we manipulate those classes. So add the class as a button listener or something? Well, have we seen, have we done something like that before? Yes, we have. All right. How comfortable are you with that? I need more practice. Okay, need more practice. So maybe below a five. Okay. Um, taking what we have here and putting the answer over there once we've done it. Yeah, we've done something like that. So I would guess that's probably, that's part of the UI, so it's a six. So this a little shaky, this yeah, pretty confident. All right, now the last part, doing the scrolling thing. Okay, well, we, 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 we've covered it, but everyone seems a little shaky. All right, we actually have covered it. That is a recycler control, like we did on the Twitter one, uh, or recycler view, rather. Uh, so we have covered it, but yeah, I mean, covering it doesn't mean that you necessarily understand it, because it's confusing, right? I can understand why you might have difficulty with it. So this part of it probably is the biggest challenge. I think everyone would agree that this part is the biggest challenge. All right, so what part do you want me to go over? This part, making this, do we need to cover anything with that? Do you have any quite, let me ask, let me put it that way. Designing this user interface, do you have any questions about that? If we were to make a checkbox, is that just a different view? It's just a different view, yeah. exactly. And it's going to have an ID, you know. Like exactly, it. yeah. Imagine. Uh, the way the way we have this written, how many listeners do we have? We have a button click listener, yeah. right? So we don't need a listener on the checkbox. You're right. We don't need a listener on the drop down, all right? Because we only want to do something when you click the button saying "Go ahead, add this to the pizza." All right? Or I'm sorry, add this to the order. I shouldn't do these classes like. I should pick different examples before dinner time because now, <laughs> now I'm thinking about do I want pizza for dinner? Yeah. <laughs> All right. So that, okay. Now, now, again, because you're comfortable with it, you may still run into difficulties, right? Oh. Don't, think, don't think that I'm saying, well, you guys are comfortable with it means like I don't expect any questions. Certainly, if you have questions, ask them because it's not like we've been doing this forever. We've been doing this for a month, right? Give or take. So. Don't feel bad if there's a part of this that you have difficulty with, but I think you've got a fighting chance to get this part of it done. All right? 
So, good. The listener, I think we can, we, I think you can all add a listener because you probably have all done that on other examples before. The classes, I'll bet you can, but I still want to talk about it a little bit. All right, because you're allowed to add. You're allowed to add something. One of the, someone asked if, if they could add functions to the class, and you're welcome to. All right. Let me think of two functions that I might have added uh, if I was uh, if I was writing this again. I might add a two string function to the pizza. All right. Right now we have an order and a pizza class. String method do in Java? It does convert a numeric to convert a numeric to string. It's more like um, a string representation of the object. It's a, yeah. So what you said is correct, and that's true, like with numeric classes. But for like classes that aren't numeric, like a pizza, it'll it'll give sort of a string description of what the class is about. This is so so. You might have a two-string method on a dog that says, this is a beagle that weighs 40 pounds. I don't know, is that big for a beagle? Probably. I don't know. <laughs> or you might say it is a Great Dane that weighs 150 pounds. That might be the two-string method for a dog. It takes the breed and concatenates the weight to it. All right? Now, it doesn't tell you everything about the dog, but it's a good description of it. Uh, a two-string for a... Uh, a student might be a student number one, two, three, four, five, Joe Smith. All right, concatenates their student number with first name and last name. So a two string will typically take some of the attributes and concatenate them together to make a good, meaningful description. Now, what would a two string method for our pizza class likely be? We have the attributes on our pizza class of size and B pepperoni. A Boolean it indicates if that's pepperoni. What would you make our what would you make your two string method be? Yeah. What I would do is I sort of put up there what I did. I would actually have code in there that, first of all, converted S, M, and L to small, medium, and large. All right, it's pretty obvious, but you know, I would want to say S, M, and L means small, medium, or large. And I would, uh, if B pepperoni was true, I would say pepperoni. If it was small, I would say plain. So my two-string method might return large, plain, small, pepperoni, medium, plain, medium, pepperoni and something like that. So why do you think I'm saying to create a two-string method here? Why am I creating a two-string method on my pizza class? Okay. Repeat that, please. You are, you are showing up, showing the description of the pizza and the... Exactly. I need a one-liner description of it to, to slap in the recycler view. All right, it's going to be a lot easier to worry about like one field than several things. If you remember, for example, in our Twitter uh, um, uh, Twitter search, wherever that was, um, we uh, what we put in there was an array of um, losing my mind here. Uh, the, the tags. So we just put the tags there. Whereas that's one thing. In general, it's better to have one thing to form a list for. So I would have a two string just to give the representation for that. All right. That's one thing I might do on the pizza class. One thing I might do in the order class might be to create a I might expand well no. 
I might create, I might overload this method add to order. All right. What does overload a method mean? Right. So you can have the same function name, but as a different signature. And what do you mean by it when you say the function signature? Well, the arguments. The arguments. Right. So, just to make my life easy, maybe to make my life easy, I might do this. And I'll put these up if you want to use these. Let's go and do that. Let's put the toString method. I won't put the toString method in. That one's easy enough to code. But this method I'll put in. I might have this method return a pizza. And then overload the method to add to order but instead of instead of getting a completed pizza object already I'm going to give this a size and a boolean for whether it has pepperoni Constructor in here either. So we'll set size and set pepperoni. You just make a constructor with the, those already in there. The, with those FF calls. You're welcome to do that if you want to do that. Pizza P equals new pizza, P set size to arc size, P set pepperoni to arc pepperoni. And add that pizza we just created and return P. All right. This is something you wouldn't have to do, but this is going to make our life a little bit easier. Because within our button, what's our code going to look like? I could write the comments to say 
get, get size from spinner, get value of checkbox, whatever. I could then say pepperoni equals get checkbox is checked. So see if the checkbox is checked. I then could say order O, add to order, size pepperoni, actually, and then String to add to recycler equals p dot to string. You don't have to do this this way, but this is a nice way to sort of make, I think, your life a little easier. Let's see what we're doing here. All right. When they click the button, right, I have a spinner. Let's imagine in my UI, I have a spinner control and a checkbox. And then I have this recycler view here. All right? Now, when I click this, I want to add a pizza to the order. So what I do is I get the size get whether it has pepperoni or not, and then call the method to add the pizza to the order. But I call the overloaded method. Again, what is an overloaded method? It is one that has the same name as another method, but different arguments. So I now have two ways I can, order I can add a pizza to this order. I can give it a finished pizza object, or I can give it the ingredient for a pizza object, that is the size and whether it has pepperoni. In either case, it's going to, in this case, if I give it the string and the boolean, which conveniently is what I'm getting from my UI, it's going to go create a new pizza object, set the size, set the boolean for pepperoni, add it to the array list, all right, and finally return that pizza. So that's what this line is going to do. So this line takes from the UI those variables, adds that pizza to the order, gives me a pointer to that new pizza that I just ordered, and I can ask that pizza, what's your description? I can call the two string method. All right. Now I'd have a couple other things I'd want to do, right? I'd want to, I'd want to ask the order for the bake time and cost. So I'd set cost equal order dot bake time or cap cost bake time equals order dot big time. So all this would be in the button clip event. You could take another approach if you wanted to, but I think this is a reasonable way to do it. Now, where would that order object be defined? Where would I where would I define the order? So yeah, in some order class. In your, in your main class when you call the application. Right. It would be, in other words, it would be. Uh, yeah. I would make that an instance variable of the main class. That way, it's accessible throughout the page. If I created it here, then I'd create a new order every time I click the button. You don't want to do that. Or 
you want this to be persistent. So I would create this as an instance variable in the class. And then every time we click the button, we'd be adding to the same order. Are you saying create the order in the main activity? Yeah, in the main activity, yeah, exactly. As an instance variable. If you wanted to enhance this, like to help your testing, you could have a clear uh, order, which would create a new order object and get rid of the old order object. That wasn't a requirement, but it's something you could do. Now, on to, so I think we have two out of the, th we've discussed two out of the three parts of it. Part one, user interface, we're probably pretty well set on that, maybe some questions. This, I think this is a good overview to think about. Think about this. Do you have any questions now about this? What is an example of instance variable in main activity? Okay, an instance variable in main activity. Uh, that would be the private stuff all at the top. So, let's. Open Twitter searches. This stuff are instance variables. All right, they there are one of these. Well, let me rephrase that. Everyone but this one is an instance variable because that says static. But each of these is an instance variable, which means it's declared on the class level. All right, so each object will have its own value for those. And it's also available throughout the entire class, code-wise. So we're doing like a private order? Exactly. Private order O equals new order. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah. I'm, I'm get, I get confused by the yeah. Android syntax. Right. And uh, the other thing we could look at in our old one would be... be a little more salient. We have our two dice defined at the beginning. It's the same idea. All right. Okay. Other questions about the code? Which, I'm trying to move this over so you can see it. Any other questions about that code? Which again, is not really the Java code, just sort of a pseudo code description of it. Going once. Now this isn't the last time you can ask questions. All right, I did want to make that clear. It's like, if you come back Tuesday and say, well, what did that mean? It's not like we say, oh, no, you had your chance on Thursday, you know. So, no, don't, don't worry that that's the case. Uh, and, again, I realize that this might take a little bit of thought and all that, but at least, like, I'm trying to give you a roadmap to get there, okay? So now, that leaves us with one more problem to solve, and we'll start out with this, and we'll probably get so far, and we will uh, do a, uh, we will do a, um, how do I want to say this? Um, I'm sure we will, uh, if we don't finish it today, we can go over it on 
Tuesday. All right? And here's what I'm going to do. All right? Because obviously I don't want to write the code for you. This is going to be a lot of fun for you. And I don't want to be one of those people that takes all the fun away. All right? You deserve the fun to write this code. But I do want to give you some assistance with that. So here's what I'm going to do right now. All right, I'm going to make an Uber streamlined version of this. I'm not going to use the classes. I'm not going to write a real UI. I'm going to create a button that all it does is adds either large plain or large pepperoni. I'll just say large pepperoni. Why, you know, well, whatever. All right. I'll just add a string over and over and over again to the recycler view. So here's what my button's going to look like. Here's my, what my app's going to look like. It's going to have a button. It's going to have a recycler view. Every time I press the button, it's going to add something to the recycler view. view. Just a like a, a, a hard-coded constant or something like that. Maybe I'll add the date and time or something. I don't know. That would be good, right? Add the date and time. That way we can see the new entries come in. All right? So we'll do that. All right? Now, how will this fit into yours? Well, your button's going to do all this stuff. It's going to get the string to add to the recycler view. Then it's going to do the code that I have. All right? Does that make sense? So this will just sort of abstract out that part of the problem. And... We'll go and we'll do it. Now, here's the good news, right? You can get, with the stuff that we've gone over today and with the stuff that you're pretty solid on, I think you have a fighting chance to do everything but the recycler view, all right? And then we can work on the recycler view together, both what I'm going to talk about today and probably finish up on Tuesday. So, let's go in and let's create a brand new application. All right, start a new Android project. What are we going to call it? We'll call it Recycle View Demo. Company domain, MikeZellers.com. Next. Oops, next. Yeah, 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 yeah. Next. Uh, I've got to create an empty activity. Next. My main activity, generate layout file. Sure, sure, why not? All right, it's going to do its thing. It's going to make an empty activity. Now, let me drag this guy over. All right. Here's our activity, XML. All right, it says hello world and all that. I am going to open one of my other uh, examples. So I have code that I can copy and paste simply because the typing is a pain in the butt. So I'm going to open this guy and I'm also going to open the Twitter example because that's what had the recycler view stuff in it.
recycler view example, which was the Twitter search. It's amazing how much time I will spend trying to remember what program I did something in when it probably would be just as quick to rewrite the code. But it's like, no, I got to be able to copy and paste that, you know. Okay, so I'm going to go in the high-low and I'm going to grab stuff from the UI. Namely, I'm going to grab a button. Put that in my recycler code demo. All right. I'm going to have to make sure I have something in my strings file for play. going to make it more meaningful, so I'm going to say add to order. All right. I think I can close high-low. I'm going to grab my Twitter search. Grab the recycler view from that. I am not going to do the nice job they did of breaking stuff up into like little XML files that I'm going to include. I'm going to put everything for clarity into one XML file. string for pizzas. done much, but I'm still going to run it, right? If it doesn't work after this, you know, why waste my time writing tons of code and find I did something dumb in the XML or whatever? So I'm going to go and run this guy. thinking about it. Oh, I ran the Twitter searches. My mistake. Let's run this guy.
I don't have basically I do not have a relative layout so saying it's below doesn't make sense I ha don't have these colors defined and I don't have these dimensions defined so I will just eliminate those dimensions again elsewhere here. Thought I got rid of those. I guess not. recycle is keeps stopping all right I'm not sure what that is uh, in the interest of time what I will do is rather than me here debugging this I will fix this and post what I did to fix this uh, to canvas and we'll continue with this next time um, I may give you a completed version of it and then I'll go back and build it. I, I like doing like they do on the cooking shows, um, where they cook a turkey, but they already have one in the oven that they can pull out so you don't have to sit there and watch them type everything, right? So I will do that, and I will post this sometime over the weekend, sometime before Tuesday, let's put it that way. Okay, I will post the changes I made to the classes, and I will post this, because I really, I, I won't post this now. I will post this when I have something that, that's better. All right? Okay. That's all I had today.